Okay. All right. Rick's Corner is back, and look who we have. We have Artemis Dolgan here with me, and I haven't seen Artemis in my show in quite a while, but I see him at the gym all the time. And there's a couple of things I want to say about you. Is that okay? Go for it. All right. Is the phone off? Yeah, yeah. I turned it off. I, I don't just want all those women calling no, me. No, right no, no, no. Okay. No. Um, that's, that's actually a woman. Short is great. <laughs> 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 there's there's always controversy about people. Oh, he's doing drugs, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's taking shortcuts, and they get this about everybody, and you've had your share of that for sure. Mm -hmm. But I know from my point of view when I see you train that nobody that I know trains harder than you do. Oh, thank you. Um, and it's true. Thank I you. see what you do. You bust your ass in the gym. You train hard, you train pretty heavy, and yes. sometimes real heavy. You force out those extra reps, and this is the way to make gains. You can take anything you want in this world to get big. You're not gonna get big unless you do your work. You know what, um, as you mentioned that, I started training with Chris Comia, the real deal. Yeah, I saw him the other day, I actually talked to him. And uh, I trained legs yesterday. It was the gnarliest workout in my 20 years. Yeah. I, you know, when you get to the point where you can't go no more, Yeah. and you push forward right. and forward, and then, you go to this very deep, distant place where you don't hear no sound anymore. It's right. just you and your will to crush it. It's very, very you, hard. You know, when you get to that point, this is where I feel like you truly grow as an athlete. You truly grow as a man. Yeah. You become mentally stronger, not just physically. And yesterday when I finished the set, I take my hoodie off and I realized, hey, I'm actually at the gym and there are people around me. You're focused. And I completely forgot about that. Yeah. I just tried to survive yeah. through that set. Well, yeah. there's no question about it for you guys that don't know Artemis. I know him and I know what kind of person he is. He's always been really good to me and very square and good and kind and smart and, and very focused on what he does. His workouts are intense and many of you probably couldn't even follow him. I mean, I couldn't right now at this age anymore, but it's, diff it's difficult. Chris, I love you, Chris. Rick, you I'm call me Chris. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just don't, call to, me late, don't call me late to dinner. <laughs> no, I have to tell you this. It's been, it's been what, three years since we did the very first yeah. video? Yeah. It was my very first YouTube video. Yes. Very first one. And for some reason, I just had a feeling that it's going to get me somewhere and from the way I grew from uh, three years ago until now with you know with my physique and just my my career it is really amazing and I wanted to thank you for oh, listen, getting me started. It's my pleasure I see people that have potential I met you you were very nice I could see that you had this look that was unbelievable it's the 70s look I you know with a that. little more meat added to it and um, I knew you were a focused person I know that you don't sit still no, I you, can't. Grass does not grow under your feet, which is a great saying, because people who have grass under their feet never get anywhere. They don't take the extra step. And you do, and you always take the extra step, and you get into clothing, you get into this, you get into that. You try everything you can to make it happen. And that's exactly what I did when I was your age. Uh, hustle, man. You got to hustle. hustle. You got to hustle. You In got this to. town, you got to hustle. Oh, my God, yes. You, you know. If you think it's going to come to you, knock on your door, it's not. No, and when you just go out there and do it, and you just do it. Yeah. You just show up and you do it. You know, you don't wait for the muse, you know, to sit down, write something. You just sit down and you do it. You know? Well, a lot of that comes from manifesting in your head. And if you believe, and I know you do, if you think about something that you want, and I think about something that I want, I know that over the years, my mother told me, and she lived till 97, Rick, you have the best luck. I said, it's not luck, Mom. I manifested in my head that that's a vision of what I want, and it will come to me, and it comes to me every time in some way, shape, or form, it will come to me. If I want a pair of sh shoes, and I'll think about them, all of a sudden they appear at my doorstep out of somewhere I saw them. So I mean, <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. I had that I had that when I was a kid. I used to lie to kids that I have a bicycle yeah. because I would pretend in my head that I'll have one yeah. because my, my parents couldn't afford to get me a bicycle. Right. I was growing up in a very poor household, but I would lie to the kids like, yeah, my mom bought me a bicycle, and I would just pretend like she did because I really want it, so she ended up getting me a bicycle. It's, it's funny how that happens. I had a, I had a, a, a a repair ball on my Mercedes. They had a hose to put on. The hose on a Mercedes, eight hundred and fifty dollars. So I gave my mechanic, and I trust him. He's really good with me. So eight hundred fifty dollars. Yes, I can afford to do it. Do I want to spend it? No. And I said to myself, I told my girl, I said, I'll get that back. It wasn't two hours later I got a phone call that I got a check coming from China for eighteen hundred dollars. Well, there we had it. Thousand dollars to boot. Manifestation. But this is how stuff happens, and it's the same thing with bodybuilding. You want it, you have a vision, you see yourself as a certain spectacle in your life, you work towards that, you always keep that vision in your head. You don't give up. You don't take something else instead of the gym. When my friends were out Friday and Saturday nights going to parties and, and, and getting drunk and hanging out, I was in the gym training. I'd meet up with them later, after I worked out. Mm -hmm. with the workout, And they used to laugh at me. This is a long time ago. Well, you have to prioritize things. Yes. You, you know what, Drake, I also grew 
um, not just physically, I grew mentally a lot, and I've, I've, I've realized that you cannot put bodybuilding in the center of your life and just be a bodybuilder no. and associate yourself only with muscle. Because when you lose your muscle, your identity is gone. So you really have to work on something outside of the gym as well. And I feel like a lot of people missing on that, you know, in the industry. That, that's so true. Um, I used to kind of think that way, but I I had other talents like with music and guitar and mm -hmm. stunts and acting and writing and and I did a little bit of everything. And even my mom, my dad died when I was very young, so he didn't get to see this. But my mom would say, "You got so much talent. I got it from her." Mm -hmm. um, that I knew that I had other ways to go. The bodybuilding though gave me the discipline, as it did Arnold and as it does to you. If you can get to the gym and do your sets and reps and watch your t diet and discipline yourself to do this, you can take that to any level you want in any place in life. You know what, I had a conversation with someone yesterday from, from the gym with one of the trainers and we were talking about um, having a career in bodybuilding and, and making it in bodybuilding and unfortunately a lot of guys they just don't have the genetics and they try to compensate the lack of genetics with anabolic steroids mm -hmm. and, and they're just doing show after show instead of just being really purely honest with themselves and, and seeing them and seeking something outside the gym because people put bodybuilding in the center of life and right. the whole life evolves around that and when you get injured what happens then your identity you nothing your identity is gone so I kind of start realizing it sort of maybe earlier in my like now in my career that I have to branch out that I have to grow because if Arnold never became an actor and never became a governor he would not be Arnold right he would be, you know, I mean, there is a lot of athletes, great athletes, great legends of the sport, but nobody really talks much about Ihaney, and he was one of the greats of all time. One of the greats. You know, but not one, nobody really talks about Ihaney. He wants to even post on Instagram as much about Ihaney. I know, know, Lee, and I did a video for him for some show he was doing. He's a really nice guy. Very nice guy. Yeah, really nice guy. Really and, nice. and Arnold just had the charisma, and he had the dynamics to walk into a room, and people would stop, and he would just carry it off, and that's what got him together. But you, you have to have other things surrounding that. And I teach wrestling out here in that ring, and I teach the guys, they all want to go off the ropes and do the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, learn how to wrestle in the middle of the ring. Learn to hold, to hold, to hold, to hold, to hold, because sometimes that top rope will, will break. Mm -hmm. Then what are you going to do? You can't use the rope. I've seen it happen over and over. Yeah. Five minutes into the match, you got Thank 10 minutes you. to go, the rope broke. What do we do? Just stand here? No, wrestle like you're supposed to. So, but like at bodybuilding, it's a door opener. If you, if you, if you show it in the proper way without walking in all flex, look at me kind of stuff. But in a nice, like you have a nice shirt on, you look well built. People notice that you don't have to flex to show them; they already see it. Yeah. Then you follow it up with kindness and a smile, a and something warm, yeah, ambitious, and something yes, to absolutely. compliment the other person how nice they are and how sweet they are. And gee, you look great. You must be working out. They never forget you. Uh, I agree with you. A little compliment goes a long way. Yes, but you know, again, I don't know. Probably, I don't know how much you talk about the psychological you know mental part of bodybuilding because it's a huge thing yeah. you know people get very insecure especially yeah. if they go on anabolic steroids and they've been cycling for years and they got used to a certain look mm -hmm. they identify themselves with yes. that look that's then, the insecurity you know and then when they don't look that way they, they wear a short on they don't flex they feel depressed you know and they're forced and forcing themselves to go back on that cycle and be dependent that's like another well, topic already but psychologically you become insecure because you associate yourself with that yes, image some do now listen I, I'm 72 I had congestive heart failure and pneumonia in July I was in the hospital I lost 30 pounds my kid said to me you don't look at dead look you're gonna no, you die. just won't give up dude. And, and the doctor says if you don't stay in here you're gonna die tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow you will die and I said oh no no I'm not gonna let that happen I, I came back I went back in the hospital I started training lightly and I gained maybe 10 pounds back and then my kid said to me, you know, Dad, you're 25 pounds lighter than normal. You actually look better. You're leaner. You look younger. You look healthier. I said, you know what? Maybe I'll just stay at this weight. It didn't bother my ego at all because I'd been there and done that. And now course, I just had the knee course. replacement, so I couldn't work legs for two months. And I felt a little bad, but I still went and did the upper body every day. Now I was 216 today, which to me is a lot of weight for a 5'11", five, five uh, you know, height guy. I, I, I agree with you. See, I, I also used... I use the sport, I use the bodybuilding as a platform to build something else. And yes. I also start realizing that um, I, I don't really want to push it. I want to experience life on a larger scale. And yeah. I got off drugs like four months ago and I stopped doing everything because I, I just felt like it was the right thing to do for me at this time. Yeah, sure. You, you know, and now I feel like my mind is back, my motivation is back because I don't go through these mood swings all the time because when you're in gear, you, you just yeah, go through this up and down. Moods, you know, yeah. It does affect your moods. You get very aggressive and I couldn't really handle some business situations without stressing out. And now I'm... I'm, I'm I'm very, very cool. I but you, very, you very also, your body has the, the dedication and the groundwork from all the hard training to retain a lot of that muscle mass. Yeah, uh, you know what? You have to really 
eat on point usually for yeah. some reason people stop eating after they go into off season or they feel like they don't have to work hard or they need to take a break they start eating whatever i try to keep my, my diet very clean i try to lift heavy to keep the fullness in the muscle because the moment you start going lighter you, you're gonna lose the fullness especially if you're off gear yeah so you i mean you have to be safe about pushing yourself absolutely heavy, especially when you're natural but you know if when you're in touch with your body when you understand what weight you can handle and what weight you can work efficiently and still experience that heavy load yeah th this is what it's all about i feel like a lot of people don't understand their bodies and they, they they don't know they go to the gym for years and they still don't know what they're doing and they look the same and they look the same yeah you know they maybe get fatter but they think they got it's funny guy. somebody asked me when i was sitting home with my leg and I'm, i had a, two ivs a day one morning one night for an infection i got from my knee and they and someone guy said well, hey did you get fat over the too much you were off i said no i actually lost weight because i stayed clean on my diet the whole time i didn't want to eat crap i wanted to stay clean knowing i was going to come back and train again you know i got the good to go yesterday from my doctor you can go back to do legs and you're so, ready today in the gym i was in the gym well, i've been in the gym for the past five weeks doing upper body but now i can do legs so i did leg extensions now this is really funny you guys my right knee for 10 years couldn't do a leg extension by itself. Mm -hmm. I could put five pounds on and it wouldn't go because my knee was so bad. Now I've got this new titanium knee and I got on the leg extension today. I'm not supposed to go heavy, but I just put 30 pounds, 40 pounds, and just did the right leg and the sucker went right up. And I thought, oh my God, it works. <laughs> it actually Rick, works now. Rick, listen, man, you already developed like the habit of being in the gym. It's a part you. It's a part of you now. It's a part of your identity. Yeah. And if not, I'm never gonna compete again or I'm never going to be into fitness or bodybuilding, I will always be at the gym. Right. And I'll always push myself to the limit and I'll always just train with a maximum effort because I don't know how to train right. like another way. I just not, I'm not familiar with just coming to the gym and sitting through it. You know what I noticed? People look at their fucking phone how many sets they have to do. Yeah, and they can't they, remember. <laughs> they have these apps, you know what I'm saying? And and, and they look in the app and they're like, okay, I gotta do three sets. And he goes and does three sets and he doesn't break a sweat. Yeah. And I, I was in LA Fitness. I really don't go to the gym, but I just meeting a friend over there. And I said, hey man, how many sets you got left? And he looks at me, looks at his thing. Oh, I'm done. I was like, don't you think you have another one in you? Let me ask you a question. Like, what do you mean? Let like, me ask you a question. I just said this on one of my videos. If you go in the gym, let's say you're going to do chest. Somebody's somewhere where you want to get that machine or that bar, and you tell, okay, I'll use that one. Mm -hmm. or, and then I'll come back to that, or I'll go over there. There's always a, 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 something that you can do instead of. Mm -hmm. And you can do your four sets and push them to the max, and then go back to that. You don't have to wait for that guy to finish. Yeah, but I'm just I'm, I'm saying that people are not pushing themselves in no, the gym no, anymore. No, no, no. And that's, they they wouldn't think of that. Yeah, they use an app, and the app tells them, I'm going to do three sets. And the way they do three sets, they just... You know, they jump in and jump out, they don't break a sweat. I do one rep and my rep will account for their three sets within right. 20 reps. It's like they say, I got a book, I'll read three pages and you, I'm done. You know, and yeah. um, I feel like people don't, and this experience with Chris Cremier opened up my eyes in training. And I, would, I really want to talk about Chris because um, he has like, this great gift to train people. Because when you're with him, you just want to impress him because he's taking a very far past failure. And the way he trains legs, I don't know if people say, oh, I train legs hard. I don't think you know what you train hard until you train with Chris. He yeah. takes you to the deep deep waters where you really want to quit you know and this is I think where you grow and this is where you develop that discipline you know towards training and coming to the gym and really working hard and what I'll also notice the approach with slow negative very explosive positive squeeze and then you know going back to the negative hold and then explosion again because it doesn't make sense if you look at the sprinters they explode they're very nice and round legs yeah because of the fast muscle fibers yeah and I never trained with that you know with that approach I, I always go through the rep you know slowly but I never did that explosive part you know and then I feel like that that really works and really stresses the muscle I'm, I'm sore every single workout how long have you been doing this now um, I've been with him for a week and I'm sore after every single workout and my body been through so much stress already and through so many preps and so there was so, so much training and it feels like I got adapted adapted to the way I trained before are you doing other body parts with them as well yes everything oh, everything okay I go for everything and I learn I learn the grips I learn different you know like sometimes you feel like oh I know everything you know yeah, what are you we'll talking never. about but when you start training with somebody else that's 
of that caliber, Chris is a legendary bodybuilder. He is. Very and, and, and you just said something that really made me think something. A grip, a change of a grip can mean all the difference in the world. Oh my God, the way, the, the just the range. Yes. It will change the range, the trajectory, the way you work on that muscle, the way you just can get involved directly with his attachment, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes, I mean, uh, people that are not truly involved in the bodybuilding as a form of art or truly don't, you know, they're not serious about it, they, it won't make any difference for them. They don't care. Yeah. You don't go to the gym to, to fulfill responsibility of, of having, you know, being leaner or accomplishing and putting that all back to the gym. But for people that are serious about the sport, those little things, they, they truly matter because little things make a whole difference. Well, because you see people, like you said, they go through the motions. They're in the gym. They're doing the same exercise with the same trainer they have. And their mind's not even on it. They're going through the motions. Okay, what's next? And, and so now, what are you training for now? What's your goal? That's what, that's what I see people training with their trainers. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> it's like, oh yeah, what's next? Yeah, what's next? Uh, and, and they're not even broke as sweat, you know no. what I mean? And they're just talking to their personal trainer. That's their psychiatrist. Throughout the set. Yeah, that's their psychiatrist. Yeah. I never understood that. And when people, I, I train people too, they try to talk to me. It's like, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not used to this. Yeah. I'm not used to talking to the gym. Some people all. use their hairdresser, but that happened when I lost my hair. I don't talk to them. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> my hair going keeps nice. And so strong. what are your, what are your goals now? What are you training? for what are you doing with your life man I'm, I'm, I'm just I, I want to be happy and I want to impact people's life and uh, share positivity should like empower people inspire them not towards just bodybuilding um, I feel the bodybuilding is just the beginning yeah know, sure of, and uh, I want to inspire people to do great things to live their dreams to, to try things that they want to try to take the risks and, and, and travel maybe somewhere and you know meet that girl <laughs> that they like you know a lot of people not just afraid to move somewhere they're afraid to come up to a woman and say hi uh, I feel like you're very beautiful What's your name? Yeah, well, you, you know, I never had a problem with that. People, I mean, seriously, <laughs> people right now decide to talk on Instagram or like, uh, or apps, you know, yeah. like the, the dating apps. Yeah. Rather than going to well, have the old-fashioned way. Like, yeah, exactly. It's just going away, man. People are like going. I see that guy on 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 things swiping at the restaurant, and I look at him. I was like, man, that's fucking sad. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny because I when I hurt my knee and I had my surgery, I had a cane. I had a walker that had a cane. Actually, leopard skin like that. And so I'll go somewhere and I'll take the cane. I'll go down the step, and all these girls are there, and I said, oh, could you give me a hand, please? Oh, like, sure. And what's your name, by the way? You're awfully pretty. And that cane just opened more doors. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walked away with it over my shoulder. You don't really need that, do you? I said, no, nah, that just kind of gets me through things. A little sympathy here and there. Like, what about your, you still have a clothing line? Yeah, you know what? So much, so many things changed. We talk about old school bodybuilding when I came in here. That was the very first yeah. video that we've done. Yeah. And uh, I should go back. I was I was going to go back into watching to it, but I hate watching myself on the camera. Every single video I've done, every single, like, the, the film that we shot, I never look at it. Really? Only like when I'm directing, it's like this is how I want it. But when the whole thing's said and done, I just don't go back and look at all. Some people over. don't like that. Yeah. I don't know why. I just um, I feel like I, I look stupid in camera. That's how no, I feel. No, you don't. You look great. And um, I started. Uh, I told you I, I had this idea about the golden aesthetics and about bringing back the old school and setting the standard. And actually cut up and it worked and the vacuums are not weird anymore as they were three years ago right. when I was like putting them out and the company grew in it grew more into not just a brand it grew into a vision and what I'm seeing right now is that bodybuilding is stagnant it's not going anywhere yeah it's stuck at one at one stage and there should be a, 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 there should be a change, and the change is not going to come from IFBB because uh, I mean I don't want to see negative things about them, but they're just not doing anything for the sport for the sport to grow, you know, and to evolve. It's yeah. stuck. Yeah, it's stuck on Phil Heath, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, it, you know, and I feel like Cedric McMillan is a great uh, example of uh, you know flowing you know mass physique. So yeah, how can you, you know. change it? Um, you gotta start rewarding people that have a static physique. Yeah, I don't have, because you know people. It's it. They say, oh, body. It's, it's their fault that they got the guts. Dude, do you think Ronnie Coleman wanted to be that mass monsters? They made him to be. He started fulfilling the expectation yeah. of the judges because they wanted freaks on stage, and they are to blame for for the guys to develop those guts because they reward the size. Yeah, and that's what the guys are pushed to do. They raise the bar. And you gotta yeah, they push to. They have to eat, in that your stomach is gonna grow along from that. Mm -hmm. When you're consuming 10,000 calories in the off season, there is no way your stomach's not gonna grow. No, especially no on top of so much test and insulin and GH and no, peptides the, the whole and deal. the whole thing. Yeah. It, you know, and even this, even this Arnold Classic, I looked at it today again because uh, I wanted to see a Cedric McMillan interview, and I wanted to talk about that really quick too. I don't. Did you see it? No. Did you watch it? Man, no. it's, it's really funny. Uh, I don't think there is anyone in 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 bodybuilding today that has any kind of charisma. 
and people criticized Cedric for um, expressing his thoughts and, and being really funny and inspirational on stage and, and actually having a laugh with Arnold. No one ever done that before and I feel like it was awesome. It that's was the way cool. it should be. It was cool and people said, oh, he shouldn't have asked him this question. Man, that's his win. That's his man. That's his own, his own man. Yes. Let him be his own yes. man. He doesn't have to be like you because when you had your spotlight, you you didn't get that. You know what I'm saying? So well, uh, here's an example. It has, if you go on an acting audition and they call you in to do a couple lines, people listen by the door to see how the other person did it. Oh, that's how you do it. So they go in and they do what the other person did. What they really want you to do is come in and do your own thing and be you. It's the same thing with this. The guy wants to be himself, laugh, joke, and have fun, then do it. Yes, absolutely. And going back, going back to Golden Aesthetics, that that's what I'm trying to create now. I'm trying to create like our own, our own thing, our own industry within the industry that's based on art, that's based on inspiration and empowering people and promoting bodybuilding from very beautiful point of view. Not, right. you know, the way they post today, they just turn around like robots. You know, if you look at the physiques of 70s, 80s, and even early 90s, people were flowing into the post. It was like a dance. It was like a dance, you know? And, and today you, you see these big dudes come out and it just, I don't know, it's a contest of size and uh, I don't think it's even, um, you know, appealing to the mainstream. It, it, it would probably scare a normal person rather there and say, oh wow! Oh no, no, no that, it, it's not like today. I, I get so many emails from people saying that they don't like that kind of stuff. You, you know, and yes, that's what I'm saying. Can, that's you, how you do the. You work hard, you can gain it, and it's so admirable that you can put that size on. But it doesn't look good. No, and that's how. That's that's why. That's how you should change the politics and award guys. Yeah, finally, they came up with a classic division, and that's what we were talking about. That's why I actually left IPB. I was still competing in, in IPB when we did the first. Thing, I guess I don't, I'm not sure, um, but I, I I left IBB and then competed in WBFF. I was trying to find peace there, and it wasn't there. The people over there, just that organization is just so weird, man. WBFF, yeah. 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 Uh, there is, uh, and all it probably appeals to certain people the style, the way they do it, but it's not a great platform to grow. And you know, there are so many things we can talk about. People associate career and fitness with competing and it's just completely not true yeah. anymore. It's never we, been true. We have a couple of minutes left. What would you like to bring up? Whew. Man, I have so many things to say, but um, I, I just wanted to tell everyone because my journey here in the sport and here in America, I mean, here in California, is pretty special and pretty unique. I took a different route uh, than the majority of the athletes that I start competing with. Um, I took my own route and I started to build my own brand and I started putting myself out there and of course you're going to get criticism and people are not going to like you, people are not going to be able to relate to you but you can't pay attention to that. You should pay attention to the people and to the lives you want to change and go after that. You know, I, I'm, I'm truly honored to have all this massive support that I'm experiencing right now and uh, all the messages and emails and I really appreciate this man right here because he kind of contributed to my vision and to what's happening to me right now so I uh, just wanted to share some positivity with you guys I'm glad I could do that and we'll have more shows we'll do more uh, you can just get limited on time sometimes we can talk so much I know it's, <laughs> it's endless uh, but I appreciate you coming Greg always yeah thank you so much and um, it worked out great I made it home in time you made it over here in time thank you so much man it's a great pleasure we'll see you all next time stay tuned for more Rick's Corner and we'll have Artemis GoldenAesthetics.com
RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.